This story, this legend, it's ours. On the 24th of October, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection finally got released for most platforms. Consoles such as Nintendo Switch, PS5 and PC and Xbox. A game that was quite overly hyped for its announcement. Whilst everybody's aware this is one of the most greatest franchises that the gaming industry and the world has ever witnessed and seen. You're talking about a game that has changed the world forever and it's still talked about to this day. This game's story, this game's legend is unlike any other. That in fact is attracting and gathering a whole new crowd of players that have never played the Metal Gear franchise before. And for that, I welcome you recruits gladly onto the Metal Gear Solid community. Not the toxic side that seems to reside mostly in Reddit, but you get my point. The fact is, if you're new into the Metal Gear franchise, then I want to inform you that you are sadly misinformed and misguided by companies such as Konami that wish to profit off you and give you nothing new at all. I'm talking to the generation that are after me, perhaps Gen Z, that there was a time in gaming a long time ago that all these OGs can vouch for, back when developers really had a core passion for creating great video games without ripping you off. Unfortunately, we live in a brave new world which is surrounded by colourful rainbows and people's feelings who are hurt who wish to cancel everything and are easily compliant to corporations that don't give a shit about you. Aside from the lecture, I wish to simply guide you into the right direction so you can play this game in the right way as it deserves to be in the modern era that we live in with technology being capable of being able to perform alongside me and all my comrades back at the voice box base and everybody else in the Metal Gear Solid OG community who feel the exact same way. You feel it too, don't you? Myself amongst many already knew this was going to happen. We already foretold the disaster which would be the Master Collection. When someone had to take it for the team by buying the game to actually review, to play it, to see if it was any different from the originals. And it turns out it was a lot worse than we remember, especially from the HD collection and even Metal Gear Solid 1. A fellow wizard like myself once when I was Nipsey, High Def Hyde. Check out his channel. This bro is a true comrade by taking one for the team. He's basically played the game and he's exposed everything from back to front that you need to know about this game. I will leave a link to the video. To give you a slight example, MGS1 suffers from input lag which is very noticeable, whilst the PS1 version doesn't. And MGS2 and MGS3 are just ported from the HD collection, and there is severe FPS drops in the pre-rendered cutscenes stuck at about 720p, with MGS2 with some cutscenes being broken. And of course, unlike any other sellout YouTubers out there that will tell you that this game is good or try to downplay it, I will not. And now all of a sudden guys, all these big YouTubers themselves have to come out and admit that this game wasn't as good as they thought it was. Although I will give some credit to some ordinary gamers who called them out beforehand, unlike these other guys who played it first. And because they've got to a certain level in YouTube, they sell out quite naturally, basically downplaying how terrible it was but having to admit that it is broken. With that all being said, you're wondering why have I made this video? Well, I've made this video for you guys, especially the newcomers that might still be on console and are perhaps thinking about getting a PC. And my advice is to go for it because consoles these days are not going to be living up to standards of modern day technology. The beauty of the PC is that you can always ever evolve the components to play these beloved games in better performance. If you're a bit worried about how to set up a PC in general, don't worry about it. Most days you can buy PCs that are already set up. The fact is, PC just makes the gaming experience all that much better. In such games that you might love, you can mod and play them again, making it feel like a whole new experience. Because the fact is today, devs are not giving us what we want, and especially on console. The age of corporate development will soon be a thing of the past as PC now is so advanced with its technology and the ability to be able to create your own games that soon enough, general lovers of video games will be making masterpieces and great video games all the more better and so they should. So anyway, if you're here, I'm going to tell you how to run these games on the emulation if you do decide you do want to get a PC. So first of all, why don't we start with the Metal Gear Solid HD collection on the RPCS3, which is the best one to run it on. So it's really quite a straightforward process. One simply just needs to go onto the RSPCS free website and download it. Of course, it already has the latest build and it will update itself from time to time, but you can decide what you want to download it on if you're on Linux, Mac or Windows. 
Wait for it to download and it should land wherever you have your downloads. Usually I keep mine in the D drive. And of course you're going to need the firmware or the BIOS to make the emulator work and play games. I'll leave a link to the website so you can get the BIOS. It's crucial you get the latest update, the latest build. So of course now you're going to want to have to unzip the RPCS3. And you can take it to whatever side or folder or hard drive you wish to take it to. Simply just click the RPCS3 EXE and you might get this warning from your PC but just run it anywhere. So of course the emulator menu will start and it's up to you if you want to create a desktop shortcut or create a start menu shortcut but just simply tick every one of these boxes and continue. And then there you have it, you have the interface for the RPCS3 system. But the one problem that you'll have is if you don't have the BIOS I showed you from earlier on, the games won't be able to work. So within the link in the description I put down in the video, you'll just have to download the file and it looks just like this. Shouldn't take too long to download. So don't worry about this, you've already got the file. You just simply need to open up on the menu to find the firmware and click on the file itself. That will then install into the RSPC emulator which will allow you to play these games. So of course you're going to need yourself some games and the best place to go is Vim's layer, I'll leave the link. In which you can actually use different emulations not just from the PS3, you have quite a selection from Nintendo to Genesis to Super Nintendo, either all the way down to Sega, Saturn and you have PlayStation 1 which is called the Duck Station which we'll get back to because we're going to be downloading Metal Gear Solid 1 for that, playing that in a 4K resolution. Whilst yes you could play the HD collection on the other emulators, it is suited to play with the RPCS3. From here click on something called the vault and as you can see you'll have a great big selection of video games you can choose from. You should be able to find the HD collection on the list but don't worry I'll leave a link for that too so you can directly get it. Of course it is quite a big download so I'm just going to skip this part and show you what it looks like once it's downloaded. So once you've downloaded them and extracted them they should look like this. As you can see here I've already got the folders with inside the RSPCS3 folder. And that's exactly what you want to do once you've extracted the game, you just place it directly into the main directory folder. And the PS3 game and everything else will be there. So when you're in the emulator, just one simply clicks add games. And for example, I'll choose Red Dead Redemption. One just must simply click the entire folder and select it, and the game should boot. So once the game's downloaded and you've got it on the emulator, you're probably going to know what settings you're going to need to use so you can actually run it in 4K. Keep this in mind though that you will need somewhat of a decent PC setup, at least on the CPU level, to make it run at this rendition. So if you go into the advanced settings, these are the kind of settings you'll be needing to tweak the game to make it run at its 4K. But we're not done here, this is just one side of it, so pause the video if you want to take note of this on the menu. Now of course the CPU takes more of a pack in the GPU, so make sure you do have a decent CPU, they are quite affordable. And if you can look here, you can see these are all the options that you'll need to select on this part of the screen. And lastly, you'll need to configure the GPU, which is quite straightforward. Just take everything off from this list. But be sure to click the apply button at the bottom right hand of the screen to save all the settings. And there you have it. The game should look exceptionally well rendered at 4K, playing at at least 60 FPS. So yes, this is way better than the likes of the Master Collection, because you're playing in a higher resolution and better performance, all around it's a lot better to play. If you experience any kind of hardware issues, there should be plenty of forums you can go on in order to help you solve the problem you may be having. Because sometimes the emulator itself can be a little bit buggy at times, but usually, through every playthrough I've had with this game, runs absolutely smoothly. So now not only have you got the HD collection with Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear 3 and Peace Walker now running at 4K, you should now have to download the Duck Station in order to be able to play Metal Gear Solid 1 at 4K. And yes, I've done my research and it turns out that it does do it better than Metal Gear Solid 1 from the PS1. Unlike the shit Master Collection that actually runs worse than the PS1 version. If you see the update available on Duck Station, if I were you, I'd just skip this update. I had problems with this before where I downloaded this update and it almost gave me malware. I'm not too sure if they've updated it since then, but if so, I'd just leave it be. It's worth mentioning too that when you're on the Duck Station downloading Metal Gear Solid 1 that you also download Disc 2. So once you've got Disc 1 and Disc 2, take them to your Duck Station directory, or as I've named it, PS1. From there then, you need to make yourself a new folder in which you want to call it just exactly the same as the other one, but you don't have to put the disc name. Just call it Metal Gear Solid Europe or Metal Gear Solid USA, whichever one you want. The trick is that we need to put both the disc 1 files and the disc 2 files all in this one separate folder. 
So as you can see, one just copies the disk bin file and the Q file of disk 1 and disk 2 and just copy and paste them in your new folder altogether. From there on then, you want to be able to make sure that you've opened up a new text document in which you'll be using that to then put both disk 1 and 2 together, specifically disk 1, disk 2, Q files. But you don't need to copy them in. You'll just need to retype them in within the text document as such. So just simply copy the name into the text document and then put .m3u file as it will be an m3u file. You then just accept it and change it. What this simply is doing is allowing you to play the game both disk 1 and 2 together without having to worry about switching it over and at the same time about the complaints of black screens and it not loading and the load and save data from your previous disk not being there. This will solve the problem. But as you can see, the extension file for the MU3 has made it into a media folder. You need to change that, so click on the M3U file and go into properties and change it with opens with notepad. Make sure that it's not a media player, otherwise it won't work. It definitely has to be notepad. So now click onto the M3U file and all you have to do is literally copy the text exactly how I've got it there into your notepad with the right spacing and the right lettering. Be sure to get this right inside the M3U document you've made, exactly making the files into the Q files that are just exactly the same as the one that are in the directory. This will definitely make your life a lot easier when you play Metal Gear Solid 1, so you have to worry about switching disks and about save data. So go back to the duck station, system, file, and choose the M3U file you've just made. And the game should boot up just fine. You can decide to load from where you was previously before, which is a cool feature about this emulation, which means you don't have to reboot the game from the entirety. You can actually just play it from where you left off. So yes, there, as you can see, the game's running in 4K. As you can see, the textures and the qualities are so much better with shadows and lighting. You can even see the reflection within the water, which is super awesome. Not only is the game more highly detailed, it's better quality in all ways with the textures, lighting and colours. Even the frames per seconds run a lot more smoother than they're better than they've ever done before. Whereas the Master Collection on the other hand is actually a downgrade from the original PlayStation 1 version. So I mean those who are buying the game for the first time I can kind of understand but even then I'd say go back and buy the HD collections because it's just been shown and proven from one of the links in the description down below I've sent you for this video that the game's actually a downgrade on the Master Collection, there's actually no improvements, in fact it's worse than it's ever been. But that's the problem with today's industry is that the PC doesn't get the advertisement and recognition it needs to be shown as the ultimate gaming computer. And yes you guys, whilst you might have consoles, maybe this might be enough to consider for you to get PC, because all round gaming is just all that much more better. It gives you much more options to decide what you want to do with the game itself, whether that be mods or improvements. One thing is clear guys, buying the Master Collection really is just letting Konami take a big fat shit on you and completely drag Kojima's work into the ground just for a cash grab. So yeah, let's face it guys, I'm calling this the Ultimate Collection because you're getting to play all these games that are better than any other ports on the console and 10 times better than the Master Collection. So at some point everyone's expecting Volume 2, but given how much Volume 1 was already such of a disaster, why get your hopes up to think that Volume 2 might be any better? And besides, you can already actually play Metal Gear Solid 4 within 4K resolution and 60fps. So yeah, just like how I showed you by going on Vim's layer or any ROM site, you just simply download the game and put it on the RPCS3. And I can give you the settings too, to make it so if you do get this game on the RPCS3, you can play this at a nice, high detailed level. Who needs to wait for Volume 2? It goes without saying that MGS4 really hasn't aged well on the PS3, but that's definitely all changed now, as you can play this game at 60fps in a 4K resolution, making shadows and all other details look amazing. So before you move on to switching your MGS4 settings, let's just take a look at Metal Gear Solid 1 setting on the duck station. This is everything I've got set up here according to what my PC can handle. I could probably go further if I chose in turning up the settings, but one will decide the settings given on how their computer setup is. It's probably worth just experimenting to decide what works for you. So if you've downloaded Metal Gear Solid 4 from Vim's layer, it's just basically the same straightforward process as before. You just open up the file, you know, choose the game, add games, and then from there, the game's already onto your computer. But now you're going to need some settings to configure it. 
So all these settings here that have been chosen should be just fine for your PC. Although I would question that when you enable the SP loop for detection that you might come across some problems. It depends how many threads that your CPU has. If you've got a very, very good CPU, you can turn it on. But if not, I'd just leave it off. So here's all the listings that I use for my GPU settings. I mean, different things might work for you, but I've noticed this is the best one you can use. If Vulkan doesn't work in terms of the renderer, switch to OpenGL. But these settings as they are work just fine. These are also the audio settings as well. So as you can see here, I just pick everything off here on this list. And by the way, enable the buffering as well, as the audio in the game sometimes might be a little bit choppy, and that really helps out with that. You can also adjust the slider at the top to stop some of the distortion you might get from the audio. If you're still experiencing stuttering issues for audio, then it's a sign that your CPU is probably weak and you could do with an upgrade. So of all that you can see on the advanced tab, I just use on your emulator too. As you can see with a maximum number of spur threads, I put it onto free. But if you're having troubles and difficulty with the FPS or the screen as such, I would just simply turn that to unlimited instead of free. So there you have it. I mean, I hope this guide's been useful for you guys, because this game in itself is a masterful story that once again we can all embark on with beautiful rendering, amazing FPS and fantastic 4K quality in textures and lights and colours. Everything we can possibly need to make this game run, the emulator breathes new life into it, giving it everything it needs to outperform most games, even including the Master Collection. So if you don't have yourself a PC, guys, maybe it's time to start considering it. And it's not just for Metal Gear Solid as a whole. One thing we can learn from the entire Master Collection situation, if devs start behaving and acting like Konami, then what's not to say in the future that there'll just be tons of remakes, no enhancements, and just pure cash grabs. If anything, the emulators are a blessing in disguise when it comes to gaming. It's also quite important to know as well guys that you can check the game compatibility list if you go and right click on the game itself. You can actually see from the actual main website itself how you can run this game if these settings don't work for you. Also you have the ability as well to be able to use different controllers as listed on the menu. So I hope this has helped you out guys, and if you're new here, then I'm hoping maybe you might consider moving towards PC, if that's exactly what you want to do. My point is that it's just demonstrated that the Master Collection itself really should have offered what these emulators do. I hope I've given you a fresh perspective on how things are within the Metal Gear Solid universe. Growing up with these games in my entire existence have been nothing short of an amazement. Wherever I felt down or depressed, these games got me through these moments with its compelling stories and its atmosphere. Just as I'm sure it did you guys, and especially all you newcomers out there, who I hope you might consider subscribing to more valuable sources in terms of Metal Gear information. These games were made a very long time ago from a young little boy in Japan who had a great idea to make the first ever stealth action espionage games come to life. And whilst Konami might disgracefully own Kojima's IP, they will never destroy the legacy and legend that is Metal Gear Solid. Well, guys, thank you for being here. I hope you can leave me a comment section in the section down below. Tell me your thoughts and feelings and if you need any assistance on anything. This has been Metal Gear Solid, the ultimate edition on the emulator. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you for joining me. This has been The Voice Box. I'm out. These are the things I will pass on. That's what I live for. We need to pass the torch and let our children read our messy and sad history by its light. We have all the magic of the digital age to do that with.